called the bids from the people that sent them in. That was oh, okay. tied to the lowest bid. It's not on this. It's not no, on. That's, these are just sample contracts. Oh, okay. There's actually four suppliers. Constellation, Direct, IGS, and Volunteer. So that was all the bid on it. And we had IGS last time through, so I think that's why it's recommended to them again. Okay, so, so what, it's going to, what was, the, what was it going to? 52. Or? And what is the current? I think it's 3.98, but I'm not sure. Let's see, let's see. It's on, it doesn't say on. Price, page 5. It was 4.6, 3 4.09, 4.3, 4.48. See on page 5 here, it's sort of like highlighted in that little box I served with, maybe. I think it runs off. Oh, here we go. All the way to the right almost. 4.52. Yeah. There's, you guys want to look at these. What was the lowest one there? 4.52. Yes. Yeah. 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 Says Henry Tub Natural Gas 12 months straight. Are they the same? Yeah. Yes. 2013 was 4.6, 2012 was 309, 2013 was 403, 6, 2014 is 448. I don't know what the Henry Tub Natural Gas is. Lowest is 4.52 from IGS. I like this one, Direct Energy, 0 0.05. I don't need that one. <laughs> uh, <help. laughs> if you see on uh, page 4, it's a uh, 12 month strip price history. That's what, that's what I just read. Yeah, and it's showing that it says uh, natural gas has increased 50% since current rates were set. So if you're looking at it right now, they are in that 4.5 range, it looks like. It was 4.6, 3 4.09, 4.03, 4 and 4.4. Yeah. It was high and then came down, it's back up. Which I guess it wasn't bad if you look at uh, 2008 when it was 13, but still, that killed me. Yes. So I think you all have the same thing I have. It tells us things, weighted scales, so IGS got 55 points, Constellation 47 points. So did you say that the surrounding communities in terms of all, they've all accepted this? Yes, they're at the second page. Um, Austin Town Board, McKinney Township, Erie County, Pullman Township, Pullman Village, Twinsburg, and Youngstown. We all do it together. We've done it in the past. This is our group. Yep. And that helps uh, with the imaginal rates. We're just going on our own. And remember, this is an opt-out program, so you're, you're automatically in it unless you choose not to, which you're allowed to do, and there's no penalty for getting out of it. Is there any time frame when you have to do it, whether you're an opt-in period or an opt-out period? Well, it's already, you're automatically in unless you opt-out. Is there an opt-out period? You can do whatever you want. Uh, let's see here. The first target was different, but now it's on. IGS Energy on page 10 towards the bottom. Prints and mailed out opt out notice on 9 2014. So, assuming we pick them, that's, they'll send people opt out notices if they want to get out of it. And so, we're with these IGS. Yes. So, why would, we, why would anyone drop them? Maybe they want to do it. Uh, residents and small businesses have 21 day opt out periods starting on 10, 11, 14. Uh, yeah, it looks like they send anyone, everyone out an opt out notice if they want to. If they don't hear back, they're automatically in. If they do, they have to do it, then they have 21 days to do it. I don't know if they went around to other communities and did a PowerPoint or not, but this is, everyone's got the same thing every day. So that's why it's on here as an emergency because they want to get this started in July to proceed with all the steps going forward. Who goes down? Okay. Um, will they renegotiate it if it goes down? I think it's a fixed rate once you're in it. 
I mean, and he's, he said before, he's, he's looked at variable, and variable sometimes is better, but when you put it all together, it makes sense to go fix. So, and I don't know what he knows about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe they know that they can't handle these big like ideas, and obviously does a lot of this. Maybe they can't compete with them. So basically, a citizen comes up and says, "Well, what's the rate?" I mean, it's on four point five two, and they get quartered by someone else at a lower rate. You say, "Wait till the opt out comes out." And October. And that could change. I mean, this could go to five, or it could go to six, or whatever. By October, it could go to three. I mean, you don't know that. That's what they're locking us in, starting that period. But it could go up or down. And the same thing. It goes up, it won't go up. It goes down, it won't go down. The citizen can drop out of it. They think. Yeah. They don't down. want to do it. They don't want to. Okay. Yeah. Twenty-one days to drop out of it. Yep. That's all on page. 21 days after they get notice. After, yeah, they get a notice first, and then 21 days after that notice. On page 10, sort of at the bottom, fourth one up from the bottom. Mails out notice on 920, 21 day opt out periods, 10, 11, 14. So, I mean, you're not obligated to do it. But. So, when you opt out, well, on your own, basically. Right, right. so you just stay with whoever. Yeah. Maybe uh, one of these other companies comes in and has a better rate. Yeah. So they actually have the points. Residents actually have 28 days because they have a decision period. So. <coughs> yeah. An additional seven day decision. So yeah. basically a month. Yeah. Opt out if they want. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, they give you some leeway. So you, you, we might be bombarded then with other companies. And he wants, uh, I know in the past, that, uh, I mean, any questions that come in here, he always wants Paul to refer him back to them. And he's the one everybody answering questions about. Yeah, sorry. Right, okay. okay. So where was it? He was not open. Okay. We can do it today, folks. I forgot to list Mark as being excused. That's why I passed out in the first page for the minutes. You guys can keep those because I got the same thing. Anything else, caucus item, or um, questions on this? The only thing talking about that, Mark, when we were talking earlier in, uh, in Straits with what they're digging up on Edna, is that going to go all the way around? You I don't know. know. I know they've gone all the way down to Edna Pass. Uh, and that has been gone all the way around. But I have. I, yes, I mean, I, I don't know if they're then continuing around Evergreen or. You know, for I do get a notice. No, they went, they went, they went around the corner. Yeah, and I'm wondering if they're coming. They were on Marion? Yeah. They're on Marion. Yep. Okay. Huh. Did anyone call a question it? No. They just showed up and they started digging. Yep. They put a little plaque on my yeah, door and said, "Any questions, call." <coughs> okay. I'm sorry. Who was it? <coughs> uh, Who's I, the uh, the menu spot? The gas line. The menu. Yeah. Oh, well, you got to drive up on Edna. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. torn apart. Is it really? Yeah. They're just digging big old trenches through everyone's yard. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, it's about three feet deep. The pipe is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the corners are digging huge manholes. I mean, big pits. Yeah. Well, because they don't want to take the tree straight up, so they, you know. Horizontal drilling? It's really slick the way you describe it. They got a little machine that's pulled a 480 foot piece of pipe, four and a half inches in diameter. Plastic pipe. Plastic pipe. They, they weld it all together first, you know, glue it all together, lay it all out, and then they dig a hole in <coughs> here, and they, 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 they have a bore, they bore a hole in. There's water and all that stuff going in. And then they put the, start the pipe up here and they pull it 480 feet. I watched them. It's remarkable. There's a ditch witch machine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know ditch witch, you know, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Anyone else have caucus items? Yes, Mike. Oh, yeah, Mike. Talk about, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mike wanted well, to talk to I just figured it would be polite since I never come. Um, if we're going to have these months of meetings about this proposed historic preservation ordinance to come in and lay out procedure, we plan to follow at this point to see if anybody had any questions or concerns. Um, and I found when I came, it's handy because I just picked the envelope to Dave Smith, who was chair of the Historic Preservation Committee. Um, at any rate, I figured something that's that major, a change <coughs> to the zoning code, um, the first and I'm not expressing any preconceived notion as to whether we should pass it or not, except that I think in a general sense some sort of historic preservation ordinance is probably a good idea. But anyway, since the number one complaint whenever we change something big is always that we didn't give the public notice, um, <coughs> I agreed to do that interview with the Vindicator that appeared last week, and so I don't think anybody can complain that there was a public notice that we were going to talk about this. And it announced three planning commission meetings in a row to talk about this proposed historic preservation ordinance. What they gave us is a fairly well-reasoned draft of something that might work as an ordinance that is modeled on a couple of different ones, like Medina, Chagrin Falls, towns that already have them. <coughs> it's limited in scope. It's not any kind of, let's turn this place into a theme park, Colonial Williamsburg type thing. It's very reasonable. I think they did a really good job. And it's a great working draft to start from. But I don't view Planning Commission's job as to write legislation for you guys. I just think that we serve a couple of useful purposes. Uh, one, I think three public meetings is a minimum for us to hold on a topic like this, depending on how many people come out of the woodwork and what they think. I think it's useful for us to hold as many as we need to so that it doesn't clog up your agenda when you have other things to do besides talk about planning and zoning. Um, and also, too, I think the committee has done the beginning of uh, a fairly good job of laying a record of why such an ordinance would exist and why we'd be doing it if you chose to pass it when the time came. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to run that by you guys. We're not going to present you with some draft and say, please vote up or down. We're going to talk about it for as long as it takes and make a recommendation to you that may or may not include a specific draft ordinance, depending on how things go. And if it requires more than three months of meetings, then great, we'll have more. Um, that's it. I just want to let you know. I figured if we're going to be doing three months worth, and I was going to be right. yacking about front page of Vintage. Yeah, I was just looking at the article. Um, how many homes do we have that were built before 1900? Do you know? I told her I know it's more than 100 just from okay. walking around, and I okay. think it's less than 200. Um, okay. I mean, if you take. South Main Street, College Street, and Water Street. Between the three streets, I think there's a hundred there. Okay. Because there's easily, and, and I shouldn't say homes, right. all buildings. I mean, okay. you know, yeah. there's certain large entities that will be affected by this, in addition to residential homeowners, um, specifically this government and my church. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how many, I think that's the only historic church on our turf. Um, so it'll be mostly homeowners. Um, and in fact, those are the sort of people that I would expect to be most interested. Also, too, if, if they're thinking long term, the, the, the committee has proposed to choose the, to choose the year 1900 as an arbitrary, we have to draw a line somewhere and say, yeah. before this line is historical, after it is not. They acknowledge that that's arbitrary. It happens to be the arbitrary dividing line by which the Fulham Village gardeners decide who to give plaques to. Mm -hmm. um, they anticipate, and part of what they proposed is, a, the establishment of a historic preservation board that would make proposals to village council on how that category of historical might change over time. But about 100 years and older is historical. That, that's another, well, and, and um, that was something that I had suggested uh, way back at the beginning when this was in its more planning stages because the house and the manor are all going to tick over that line one by <coughs> one over the next 25 years, starting at the top there and <coughs> way down. You know, that may be. Um, a more intelligent dividing line because things that we don't think of as historical because they weren't that old when we were kids, you know. Actually, how close is your house to 100? Yeah, uh, 1926. So yeah. Um, totally. Yeah, there's all sorts of houses from your era, from the Manor era, that are, are going to take over some dividing line. So they thought <coughs> it's not so much important for them as this working committee to pick a dividing line out. So they picked 1900 because it was easy. And then they figured this board that they would propose that we create would talk about how that definition changes over time. But yeah, 100 years would be another good dividing line. Um, 
That was just their thought process. I think there's one particular member of that committee whose home is not 100 yet would dearly love for it to be historical. <coughs> uh, Chris, this thing that they put together has 68 oh. addresses in it that are in the village. Oh. They've got more than that. That's, yeah. Well, that's from 2013, 68 homes. I mean, that they've given plaques to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm totally guessing. It could be because I don't, I don't know that um, the school's on there. I don't know, that's just the number I found. So. Yeah, that's not. Okay. Polling Union Square. Current so. listing as of December 2013. Yeah, and, and one other thing, too, and I, it, it props to. Yeah, the Presbyterian Church is on here. Yeah, 1897 for the main building. Okay. Um, the You chose the members of the committee? What's well, the uh, direction from Rebecca? Right. It, 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 at least. Um, as we're discussing this, both the members of the committee and the members of the planning commission who currently serve, a majority of both committees would be affected by this ordinance. This is not, you know, <coughs> theory. The planning commission, Mark Thompson, myself, and um, Rebecca, if you add the our three houses together, you get about 500 years there. And three of them, they're three of the oldest. You got any feedback, anything from anybody? No, I haven't heard a thing. I mean, it, it, I, I was it, sort of delighted that the article ran where it did because there can't possibly be anybody who's not aware. And I guess we'll find out. Tomorrow night's the first one. Um, I, I don't plan on voting on anything until September and it may not even happen then. It just depends. I mean, Bill it may not be there tomorrow either. What's that? Not that it matters, but Bill won't be there tomorrow night. Mr. Well, Dunn. we wouldn't vote anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm just thinking mostly feedback. I mean, you know how meetings can be where, you know, some nights you, you think you're going to be there for five minutes and the room fills up. How many of those we have to do before we send a proposal up to you? We'll do. I've got something to say. I mentioned this to you in the back room. <clears throat> I think that our legislated, legislation committee is underutilized. It's not at all. Okay, so it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, these residents have been kind enough to put their time and effort into writing this, but the residents aren't the ones who write legislation. So I definitely think that our legislation, legislative committee needs to look at these at the least. At the least, that's why I was set up. Was to read okay. Yeah. So I just, just wanted to put it that way. Yeah, the, the, there is a draft ordinance. It, it's very intelligently designed. I, I don't know that all the parts would work, but but, but they, they envisioned it. This committee is a working draft that everybody else could start with, a baseline. So, Mike, when you said that there will be three hearings on it, or you know, three public meetings on it, um, was that advertised? You mean in a in a general article? I, I said it in that article. Uh, okay. I think it's good practice. I mean, our planning commission, our, our procedures are kind of ad hoc. It is. I think it makes sense for us to have that many uh, because that's just less meetings you would have to have in the time come. I mean, I think we're a good forum. Plus, you know, when you're going to talk zoning, you know, it's better to at least have initial discussions in the non-elected body. That's part of our purpose. Part of our purpose is to insulate village council from the fact that zoning makes people angry, and zoning involves the possible <coughs> the property balance with an overall property value. You know, it, it, it just it just makes sense to have those discussions there. That's the reason we're appointed, not elected. At planning commission meetings, you mean? Yeah. Okay. But we don't pass squat from the legislation. We just <coughs> recommend something to you. Right. Right. Um, I'm just. Um, I feel like we should advertise those meetings specifically for planning commission, the way we do other, um, so that nobody from the resident, residents or whoever can come forward and say that we did not do our part of the responsibility as a village to make those uh, meetings publicly known in advance. Well, tomorrow night's too late to advertise. Yeah. Are you talking about a legal notice or just a, yes. a, a little thing in their agenda thing? No, I'm talking about a legal, legal notice, notice so that nobody can say, I mean, well, it'll be in there. Well, and, so. and they'll know. And mm -hmm. if they choose not to come, then that's up to them. Well, once we get a draft from the planning commission, and then I would suggest it goes to legislation to look at, and then I would suggest it come before this, this body. Then I would do three readings. You know, I would have a public hearing and then three readings. I would go three there, legislation before this body, public hearing, three readings, and then you pass it. That way, you can save the, the, the time and effort of having to advertise 
planning commission, because I don't even know that it's in our ordinance that it's required. As long as you do it for the council, I think, and, and, you, and you publish the uh, public hearing, I think you're perfectly fine. Oh, so three readings, um, yep. that would be the three. Four council, those would be the three publications. That's right. And that scenario yeah. makes seven times. Three, if they're going to have three public hearings, and the council has a public hearing, mm -hmm. four, plus the nights of the three readings would be seven opportunities. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's plenty. Uh, yeah, and it's real quiet and uncontroversial. Third meeting, sit down, call the vote, send you our report, call it that. The only reason I was thinking that more is just it turns out. Right. I, I mean, you did announce match. it in the paper. I know, but that doesn't count as a public hearing. Okay. 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 And I think the villagers look at this body as the body that makes laws and rightfully so, not the planning commission. So I mean, they can recommend whatever they want. But if, if that would have said the village council is going to have hearings on it, or I guarantee you, when people are thinking, now I've got to come out. So I think they would come to his just for information. They'd come okay. to yours because it might be an ordinance. So we'll do those advertisements for ours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that wasn't the case of all grants. So. <coughs> no. Yeah. And, and it just gives them three more, you know, practice. That was pre me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm that magical, but, yeah. you know, if, if we got to have multiple meetings and draw this thing, I, I, maybe this thing just won't be controversial at all. I'd probably be overthinking it. Better to overthink it. We'll find out. Okay. Uh, see you tomorrow. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any caucus items? <clears throat> nice to do a turn. You come in once in a while. I've got a lot we can, we can run through. You guys are ready. Okay, uh, there's a hold up with the Barnheiser um, uh, citation. The prosecutor's secretary is moving on. Uh, she has, I think, three more days. She has not had it written up. So we talked last time about when it was sent. It still hasn't been written up. I actually stopped on the court today and talked to her. She said she'll do what she can in the next three days. She does not know if she's going to have it official. So that's what we are with Barnes. She not did? Um, actually writing the official complaint. complaint. So, okay, how long have they had this? Yeah. Um, I think it's the last time, uh, I think I told you, sent Okay, I, I called down there like they, that. Nobody <coughs> took my call. Uh, just hang with me, it's, it's in here. Uh, so I don't need to drag this out. I'll tell you when I sent it. Okay, so that's the second time. I, I, I got to apologize. The, the date changed the last time I went into it. Uh, it now says June 27th, but at the, what year? Of uh, this year? But no, no. Oh, May 9th. May 9th, it was submitted. I was with uh, Michael Thompson. Actually, helped me do it at Shrubbery's Court. We did it together on May 9th. So that's when it was sent. Okay. On May 9th. But we we asked for action like years ago. I mean, it don't take that long. I don't care if the secretary quit or whatever, but they changed. Um, Leonis wasn't there all that time, right? Yeah. He, he, he's been there about a year, and then about two years now. Two years, yeah. Okay, if, if we're talking about this specific specific charge, it was the complaint was filed on May 9th. Uh, this year. That's right. Okay. All the rest of it from the time that I got on was dancing around. You know, basically waiting for his um, building permit to run out, getting through the winter, uh, writing a letter to him. Then we then we actually um, voted here to say it was a nuisance. So that's how all of that went down. Okay. So. Thank you. That's where we are with that. It's in, it's in there for It's been there since May 9th. Okay. So that's that's where we are with that. Um, in it, the green is going to get another. Uh, Notice here for their second notice. Uh, I do think that that's going to be taken care of. He called me uh, recently saying that he's uh, entering into the contract here shortly. Um, I did get a request from Lee Marsden at 26 Water Street. Uh, she'd like to demolish a barn, garage, carriage house on her property that is in disrepair. So that's one of those historic structures, even if it isn't a home, it's a historic structure. I also received uh, a zoning permit 
application from Rex Fisher uh, that accompanied um, a very large check, a little less than $2,000, uh, for his new home that will be built. Where? On, on the same location. Do you know that number? No. And our friend Mr. Eisenstein, we had another, um, we had another pre-trial with him. Uh, supposedly, his attorney said he's going to take it, tear it down. We'll see what happens. Um, with that being said, we are scheduling a trial. So we are scheduling a jury trial. We'll see what happens. All right, 7:30. Please take the pledge of allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call the members. <coughs> Mr. Cassette, here. Mr. Donovan. Attorney Limmer. Mr. Major. Here. Mr. Cerny. Here. This is Yet. Here. Motion to excuse Mr. Donovan. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to excuse. Mr. Leonard? What are you looking at? I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you looking at there? Second from Mark. All in favor? Oh, Mark, you seconded. All in favor? Any opposed? Nobody said hi, so what happened? No one's no one's ready to call for yes or no. Roll call vote. I mean being that I made the motion, Mark seconded, that means we are eyes. Not necessarily. Not necessarily no. Whoever right? makes the motion has to vote yes. Okay. Really? I yes. have sent my second vote. Whoever makes the motion has to vote oh. I have to vote yes. I have to vote from Government class. No, my, my parliamentary procedure class at YSU. Robert's rules. Robert's rules. Okay, I'm going to roll call. Okay, so I'm going to roll call. Request a roll call. Okay, Mr. Cassette. Who uh, requests a roll call? The mayor has you to? Have to. You can request okay. him to have a roll this call. This is in favor of um, excusing the right. right. <coughs> Mr. Cassette. I just, I, I, it's difficult because I know I miss because of work, so it's hard for me to say yes or no, so I'm going to abstain. Mr. Major? No. Mrs. Sir? Abstain. Mrs. Yash? Yes. yes. Right, Motion here. Um, tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. We have um, one <laughs> yay, one nay, and two abstains. So we need the mayor to cast the tiebreaker. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna excuse him, but I will definitely address this, and it won't happen in the future. So this passes two zero two one. Yes. No. While we're excusing, since the mayor was not excused at the last meeting, do you want to do that at this point? No. 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 Did we forget that? Yes. 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 I went back and found my notes, and the only one that—that's why I wanted to correct the minutes. The only one that was excused was uh, Mr. Cassette. I'd like to make a motion to excuse the mayor from the meeting of 7-1. Seven, one. Seven, one. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? No. Any opposed? <laughs> no. Hey, Tim. Yes. If I, if I vote yes, then you don't have to mess around with it, right? No, but he, well, he, it he, he needs to, it needs to be addressed. Look, I mean, do you want to do that? No, just leave it the way it is. It's fine. No, no, there's, I don't want to put you if there's the medical way. issues and stuff, that's fine. But to miss five out of 14 meetings, it's not a good pattern. So, so. Okay. Whatever. All right. Moving on from that. Uh, acceptance of the minutes from the previous council meeting. I make a motion to accept the minutes of Tuesday, July the 1st. Second. That's amended, right? With the amendment. They're not, they're not amended. They're not amended because you put a new I put it in on. before you voted on it or anything, so the new oh. cover sheet replaces oh. the original. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, so that page that I gave you is the, is so, the new so cover. So we rip off the first well, one. you're going to lose the back page if you do, so. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. so this I'll is... Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when I present a copy to, to Paula, which I have here, it'll be okay. in the mailbox later if anybody wants to recopy it. Okay. 
Okay, so we're accepting these minutes with the amendment. That with that presented. page on it, yes. Yes, and the only change, again, was because Mark's name was left off last Okay. Linda? I a motion. Yeah, we have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Same. Okay, notification of meetings and events to the public and news media. Blooper. There's something you need Just to Just when the next meeting is. Um, well, we were supposed to be tonight, but since he's not here, we're not even having a meeting for that. That's scheduled for the third Tuesday. 6.30 is on or 6.30? 6 6.30. 30. Okay. Uh, finance? Um, there isn't anything scheduled right now. Legislation? Nothing. Police? Um, yeah, it would be August August fifth at six thirty. Streets. What is streets meeting tonight? Mm -hmm. We'll have one next month. Next month. Which would be the ninth, the nineteenth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, boards A or B. We will be meeting Thursday, August seventh, seven p.m. Village Hall. We do have an agenda, and that would be the twenty six Water Street. Um, Carriage house demolition. Give me the date again. Thursday, August 7th. Planning will meet tomorrow, third Tuesday, at 7 o'clock here at Village Hall. Board of Zoning Appeals? I'll take this one. Uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals has a meeting scheduled for Thursday, July 31st, 7 p.m. Once again, Thursday, July 31st, 7 p.m., Village Hall Board of Zoning Appeals meeting, and they'll be going over the 4M conditional use uh, permit on Riverside Drive. Dave, is that just a um, meeting to discuss, or will they be voting on that that night? You know, I'll be honest with you, um, I don't sit on the Board of Zoning Appeals, mm -hmm. so I do not know the answer to that question. I do. We're, we're going to discuss it. And no voting? I don't know. Could vote. Okay. So, will we have an advertisement in the paper so that our residents know that this meeting is being held and what it is going to discuss? Linda, I'll take that. Um, Nick and I were just discussing this. I do have a list of the uh, of the, the residents, the adjoining <coughs> residents. We will let them know. According to what our ordinance says, that those people will be notified. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if if the, about the number of days. I don't know the uh, the number of days. Honestly, okay. it does say the number of days. I, I kind of thought that, but I didn't know it offhand. Right, but I think the issue is. Paula was saying that due to the short time frame, mm -hmm. they have to hold their meeting within 30 days of when he was issued his permit. He, was, he has not been issued a permit uh, request. Okay. From the time he submitted his request. From the time he submitted his request. Yes. That's the 30 days. Correct. Okay. So that's why it has to be between now and I believe August 3rd because I believe that the receipt was dated on the right I believe that the receipt was dated July 3rd so you're saying from application date yes that's the way I understand it I mean, I understand. and that's the way Paul explained it. Any person, this is 126405, any person seeking a conditional use permit shall provide the Board of Zoning Appeals with such materials as it may require, in addition to the materials required for ap application for a zoning permit. The board, shall, the board shall determine whether the granting of the requested conditional use permit is authorized by law and in conformity with the intent of this zoning code. No conditional uses shall be allowed which would change the essential character of the same area be dangerous or disrupting
to existing or future neighboring uses, create excessive additional requirements at public cost for public facilities and services, involve uses, activities, processes, materials, equipment, and conditions of operation which will be, determined de de be detrimental to persons, property, and or the general welfare by reason of traffic, noise, smoke, fumes, glare, or odors, create interference with traffic, result in the destruction, loss, or damage of a national or historic feature of major importance or in any way be detrimental to the economic welfare of the community. Okay. I read this the other day, but I know I read something about adjacent properties. I, weren't they all notified? Yeah. They were all notified. The whole list of them. And they came to the meetings. The planning commission over here. The last planning commission meeting? Well, remember we had, there was two meetings I think we had addressing this, and they were, they were both. For the conditional use permit. Or was that for well, they Well, came, they came for the original when it was going to be two sixplexes or whatever, mm -hmm. and then he redid it and to duplexes, and they were for that one also. They were against it, but they were there, and we couldn't vote no because it says they're allowed to do that. For the, for the, two, for the two duplexes. Yes. Okay, now they're asking for a conditional use permit. I, I've got it here. Board of Zoning Appeals shall call a public hearing for any of the following reasons. We'll go to the one that's important here. Uh, upon application for a conditional use permit in a district requiring such a permit according to the procedure set forth that I just read. And it says B, the applicant shall pay a fee specified by council, which is $250, which he has done, upon filing for a hearing before the board. The hearing shall be called within 30 days of the request. Notice of the hearing shall appear in a locally distributed newspaper at least two weeks prior to the hearing. So that's two weeks. We're still good. So I'll, I'll be on it immediately. All adjoining property owners and others affected by the decision of the board shall be notified of the hearing in writing five days prior to the date of the hearing. So newspaper, 14 days, which has already been taken care of by Paula. So we've, they only need five days notice. There we go. Legal ad? Uh, to, I don't know that Paul would be able to answer that. Okay. Uh, the board shall hear and determine whether a variance may be granted or a conditional use permit may be issued. A decision of the board shall be made within 30 days following the hearing. The board shall keep or cause to be kept on file at Village Hall a full public record of all its proceedings. This record may not leave the Village Hall premises and may be duplicated by the Village Secretary upon request with the cost of duplication being borne by the requesting party. Village Council will have the authority to approve or disapprove after a public hearing the decision of the Board of Zoning Appeals with regard to a variance application filed on behalf. Okay. Well, that's, that's a variance. That's not a conditional use. So that does not apply. What's okay. that section number you're reading from? I am reading from 1264. 03. So before that meeting takes place, you will be doing the um, numbers for the density issue? We you know, I don't think so. No, that would be a, um, that, would, that would be for zoning. That would be for a zoning permit. Conditional use, that's more to zoning appeals. I didn't really even see my name in there. So are you saying that the Board of Zoning Appeals checks the density against the developer's numbers? They're the ones that do it? I think they're fine there. They had enough to do two sixplexes, I think, as far as density is concerned. Well, I'm not, really, I'm not ready to say that because things have changed over time. So I'm, I'm not going to say that they're good. I will not say that. Um, I don't, I, I don't know that this requires that. I actually think that, that the density issue, when they replant in two lots there, yeah. 
their I don't think there's any density out of it. So I don't know. Well, when they're still, even if it's too large, you still have restrictions on the amount of density any building can that's have on that lot. That's absolutely true, and I think that's a zoning issue. I really do think that that's a zoning issue. Because if someone's allowed to build, being, if they're granted a conditional use mm -hmm. for a duplex in a residential one district, that duplex could be multiple sizes. And it needs to be within a certain size. Right, right. And, and this is this is a personal opinion. I think that uh, I think that Bob over explains things. I think he gives too much information. That's a personal opinion because he confuses the issue by the numbers and the things that he gives us. I mean, it it should. It, this is my opinion. It should be clear and straightforward. Am I allow? Are you going to allow me to have a duplex in an R one on these lots? Period. That's what it should be. I think that he confuses things, and then the density issue can be addressed with the zoning permit. That's the way I see it. Okay, so it would not be actually dealt with until the zoning permit itself. I, I agree. That's what I think. The particulars need to be hashed out by me for the zoning permit, but the general idea of whether it's allowed needs to be decided upon in planning, and then we'll go from there. Okay. I mean, I've had uh, two people already call me about density questions and what's going to happen over there. So I think we, we have to be absolutely careful that we're making sure whatever's going up that it's... That it meets right. the drawings submitted for the zoning permit. Does that have more than one acre? It did. It did. The one piece did. Okay. You know what? Um, I do have that information. Okay, uh, the present land use is 0.385 acre and 0.475 acre. So those are the sizes of the lots according to 4M. That's all according to 4M. So if you want to add those together, you're going to you know, they actually address this. Um, once again, this is their information, so I'm not saying that it's um, absolutely accurate. I'll, I'll come back to this. I'm not going to hold you up, but I'll come back to this. Moving along, I'm scheduled meetings. <laughs> West <laughs> Reserve Fire District. Sorry. Oh, wow. Um, West Sorry. Reserve Fire District will meet next meeting in August, August 13th, at 7.30 p.m. at the fire station on 17th. Forest Board? Oh, wait, wait, excuse me. Did they cancel that meeting for summer recess? For August, there's no meeting in August. Okay, no meeting in August. Okay, so Forest Board. Yeah. Okay. Forest Board, we meet uh, the 22nd at 7.30. The fourth Tuesday, so I'm going to fourth Tuesday, and we're not changing that. Good. And High Memorial. We meet tomorrow night. What time? Every other month, the third Wednesday. At 3 p.m. in the afternoon. I should say night in the afternoon. 3 p.m. Okay. And we're sticking with that. If you can't make it, get off the board. I like your attitude. Okay. Report from the mayor. Um, I, we talked about the ordinance for the gas, so we'll revisit that. And the violations bureau account from June has been balanced. So I should accept the mayor's report. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, report from fiscal officer. Okay, I'm circulating around a list of bills to be paid. Uh, the accounts have been all reconciled as of June 30th. Submitting that. We are reviewing signatures. You have the June numbers in front of you. Everything seems to be doing pretty well. The general fund is doing well in the area of court receipts, which also 
special effects the court computer fund. Um, the only line item I see that is that will be of a concern is the streets, other contractual, but the streets supply line line item has enough money, so if we do have to shuffle some, we can. Uh, all salary line items seem to be doing okay, and I will continue to watch those. Um, I submitted the request to the county auditor for the second half real estate advances. Those should be starting sh shortly. We received you know, notification from the Ohio BMV that all paperwork has been filed for the permissive tax and collections will begin with the 2015 registrations. Finally, the village audit has been reviewed. The exit conference is scheduled for July 17th, this Thursday at 4 o'clock. You are all invited to attend. How did we make out? What did you say in the sequence? You'll find out Thursday after. Oh, you didn't complain about anything. I'm going to ask if it was easier to work with. You should ask that question. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ron. He's better. Hey, go separate. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we all did. That's right. And also, when I gave you the fan up there for those very hot days, I think that helped. <laughs> that is a nice touch. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a report. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? You want to do yours or you want to go ahead and take them back to you? You're up next. Um, no report. No. Uh, go to him. Okay, I'm sorry. Report from solicitor. Oh, I'm sorry. No report. I got a call this week. Actually, an email called John Mary. Uh, John is on the, the board of zoning appeals. And this is in. Uh, concern of the 4M company's application, I think it was. He wanted to know if he thought there was a conflict for him to be on the Board of Zoning Appeals. So I asked him about his relationship with Mr. Mastriani, and there is some financial ties to Mr. Mastriani. I won't disclose what they are, but after hearing what they were, it was my opinion to John, for his own sake, and for the integrity of the process, that he not sit on the board during their um, their application. Now, I don't know how that would affect or will affect their decision as far as if there's a tie. I don't know what his role is as far as being head of the zoning board. You know, I don't know how many members there are. I think there are five, including John or no, including John. So if there's a 4-4 tie on something, I'd have to research as to what would happen next. Um, but it was my opinion to him that he not have any um, say. I think he can run the meetings, he can preside over them, but have any say in any of the process or definitely to vote is something he should not do. And I think he was going to follow my advice. Um, I also went to uh, Woodnowers a couple days ago and I saw I saw him too late, but Mr. Eisenstein was in line. So I walked up and he started talking to me about his pavilion, which he, he has a lawyer, and I didn't want to talk to him about it, but he wanted to tell me stuff about it. So he wants to work with the village, and I told him quite simply that the pavilion has to come down before we can do anything. And Dave echoed that, I think, at the pre-trial. He, he informed me that they were looking, that he thinks that the pavilion might not be in the repairing setback. And I said, if you think that, and you can show it to me, and I can verify it, we'll call it a day. He said, but I need, he's having a survey, apparently. I said, give me the, the results of the survey once you get them. 
So I'm curious as to what is going to happen if he's going to have it surveyed and they're going to tell me about him repairing a setback. But I'll review it. Um, and and I cut short my conversation in all honesty because I didn't want to talk to him anymore because he didn't have counsel there and I just didn't think, you know, I didn't see it in his best interest to, to talk to me. So, so that was it. Those were my two exciting uh, encounters for the week. That's all I have. Motion to accept two exciting encounters. <laughs> Second. <laughs> all in favor? Hi. Gotta ask what's going on with your uh, okay. tampering way up here. I got a call from the governor's office today to go down for my interview. And I'm going to schedule it tomorrow. I don't know when it's going to be. Probably in the next two or three weeks, I imagine. The Democratic Party has set a cutoff date of Friday for anyone interested in the Democratic nomination. So far, I'm the only candidate. And that might change by Friday, it might not. If I either get the nomination or I get the appointment, then I could conceivably be, you know, selected as soon as September. I don't think that's going to happen. I think a likely scenario would be that the governor will appoint Shirley Christian, who is a Republican, I think. <laughs> She's not sure herself. I'm not sure. And then, based on where I stand now, I would probably be the Democratic candidate, and then I would run in November. That's kind of how I see it right now. But as I've learned, things are subject to change by the second, so I don't hold my hope up too high or low on any of the things I just said. I just react and live by the day. So but that's where everything is. I'll know a lot more in the next two weeks. I'll know Friday if anyone else is in. I'll be the Democratic candidate. Then I'll know probably the early, mid, middle of August, who the governor picks, if anybody. And then come September 3rd, I'll know who got the appointment. In my, in my, in my favorite world, you know, I get the appointment, I'm a candidate, and then I'm done with running and everything in September. I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to run in November. That's, that's how it's set up. I think you need to know on speed dial. <laughs> I already talked to him, he's coming back. <laughs> no, but if, if we get that if we get closer to that point then I'll I'll meet with counsel and you know, if it seems like it might be a possibility, I will meet with whoever you want and transition that person so they hit the ground running if that were to occur. But that's so far from down the road I don't even think about it. Okay. I want to think about it, but I won't. Okay. All right, you ready, Dave? Yes, I'm ready. Um, density in residential district one is no more than 30 percent of the lot shall be occupied by principal and accessory buildings combined. 30 percent. 30 percent. So we'll have to do some math. We'll have to keep them honest. Uh, that will be that will be determined when they file for the zoning. Anything else for your normal stuff, or just for your um, no, everything else has been discussed. If anyone has any questions about it, by all means. Do you know about a meeting that was held at the library by Mr. Mastriano? No. That had a sign put up at that meeting that said, first public hearing? <laughs> <laughs> really? Did anybody attend that meeting? Uh, I not anything about it. Yeah, okay, so it's officially not a village meeting. I had somebody call me on that, too, who was there. That's what it said, first hearing. I said, it said what? Wow. First public hearing. So if that's a little deceiving to people, if that was not a village public hearing. Oh my god. I do it. Um, I do it right now. Chris I and Joe took a, a, a drive. And uh, mm -hmm. we the sidewalk that would eventually join the new sidewalk for the village. Okay. In front of the one gentleman's house, which is the second house. Yes, we Got it. The sidewalk is all busted up and grass is grown in and it's, you can barely walk on it, let alone ride a bike on it. Okay. So you have to do something, correct? You have to serve. Absolutely. The, um, the residents are required to keep their sidewalks in safe condition. They don't have to be perfect. 
They have to be in a safe. Let's take a look at it. But, I will. You know, you got this beautiful sidewalk, and then this thing that kind of looks like a sidewalk. And that's this is absolutely the opportunity to to make that happen. So I appreciate you guys looking for that. Yeah. You know, it's it's obviously, uh, how much did that new sidewalk cost? Because I will use that to. Like, That's the number I heard. Yeah, it was close to a yeah. million, yeah. Okay. How much did you say it was close to a million? I thought it was nine hundred thousand. No, no. No. No? It was like six, uh, right? About, about 400,000. That's all? I thought it was more than that because the match yeah. was 10%, which was $90,000 at mine. Oh, I don't know. That's yeah. how many I remember. Maybe it was 20%. I don't know. Anyway, okay, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. Absolutely. Anyhow, he's got to fix that. Sure. You went and took a look at it. And this would be a great opportunity for that. And you can use Jeff. I don't know. Do you know who the second driver? He he's 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 um he's he's sat not sat on the boards, but he's presented um Sorry, he's architect of Fenero, right? That's it. Okay. And it was what is that? Ferrero. Fenero. F A N I R O. Ronald it's the Corner. Second Fenero. house. It's like a two. Very good guy. I don't know. Style what house. Name. Second. It's right across the end of the break. The 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 yeah, they've got a nice sidewalk. On the corner of Nesbitt? Because those folks who are one is right next to the one is right next to the one. And that's it. Oh, and the first is right next to the one. That's the last house in the village. Yeah. You're going out. Well, I'm going Whatever. Take me out. The last house in the village is terrible. The one next to it, use your discretion. Okay. And do. Motion to accept the requirement and zoning inspection report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We'll come Chief of Police and Street Commission. from Outstanding Committees of Council, Finance, Wage, Audit, and Insurance. Um, Joe, did we get any answer on the thing with Gary DiLorio? I hope. Refresh my memory. The, the bill that was sent. Oh, about the words. Yes. No. Mm -hmm. No. You know, I, I, should, I should call... Uh, I, I didn't. I, I didn't do anything with that. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So we're just holding on that bill. Yeah, I still have it. Okay. Hold so, it. Yeah. We, so we need to yeah clarify that with Gary. Okay. On on finance. Um. So we're all ready to roll on the perm tax thing. Um, our levy renewal replacement. You'll be taking that to the board of elections along with the information from the county certification. Yes. Okay. And I would like to ask Mark and Bob if you would um, do the flyers. Sure. And, and of course, then we'll all pitch in to distribute the flyers. And how did you do it um, in the past? Because in that position, I was never a part of it. Um, did you collect money from all the council people? Eventually. Yeah, we brought it. Honestly, we brought it all last time. And he just said mm -hmm. to me, mm -hmm. gave him money. Okay. $25 sound like real. Did you have me enough? Yeah. Well, however much it is, I'm sure everybody from council would be willing to yeah. do that, um, make a donation to help. We can't take that out of village funds, obviously, to to do flyers for the renewal, Joe, is what we're talking oh, about. Oh, for the renewal. For the tax renewal. Okay. Um, and then. next year, right? It's this it's coming small. fall. So we would have to yeah. go through the neighborhoods this fall. Right. So we would have to distribute them. Sure. Which we could all take a chunk of them to do yeah, that. We also did um, uh, signs. signs. We did a few signs, too. Oh, do we have old signs that we can use? 
I still have mine in my garage, but I have to see what it reads. We brought them all. They just said renewal. Yeah, it should just be a renewal. Remember when we brought them in, we, we put them back in the office. Uh, so we'll see if we can track those down. Yeah. We'll talk yeah, about it. Yeah, we'll take them down the basement. Maybe we can track those down. Everybody was given like four or five to distribute. Mm -hmm. um, Able to do that? Yeah. Okay. The next big thing that finance will be working on, and this is going to start probably in early fall, is it's time to meet again on the hospitalization with uh, National Health Care and uh, make some decisions, um, do some research about some other options of things that might be available to us and uh, reevaluate, make a decision to have in place by December 1st when ours expires. Did you guys get a chance to look at the credit card stuff at all? No, we did not. I know Russ wants to get moving on that. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think um, your decision should be what holds in this. As a mayor, as the violations bureau that falls under you, I think that your decision should be the one that we honor on this. And um, you know what else I was thinking, Tim? Since we're having a meeting with the auditors on Thursday, let's run that by them and ask them if there's anybody that they've seen consistently being used by. Um, Company yeah, maybe they have somebody that they think is very reputable, and that I'm sure that they can't recommend people, but. Maybe they see a name popping up more often, and and maybe it would be easier for you and for Paula if we use the same bank that you have all of your account and thing handled by currently. So it's kind of a better flow of things. Yeah, I mean, I don't, how it ties in. I don't think that really matters. Doesn't they, matter. They just deposit like payroll, they deposit whatever account you have. You just need to give the routing number and account numbers and stuff like that. Okay. Either way. So whatever, you know, whatever works. Okay. But I do think we should get it going. Yeah, I agree. I just wanted to ask a question. Since Mr. Limmer's not here, do you think that he's still going to want to be in the flyers or whatever? Well, I certainly hope so. Because I'd be willing to lay it out if somebody just gives me an old box. Who wrote it last time? I think it was Mr. Limmer. Should we not have something on file that we just... I don't know if it would be on file here, but somebody should have a In levy folders. There's a couple of levy folders. Big, thick ones that have lots of stuff in. I mean, I'll, I'll make the flyers. The, the, the master probably copy, the flyer if you want. Copy. Mm -hmm. He's not just, here. I mean, yeah, we could just use what we used in the past. That's probably mm -hmm. easy. It's just change some things. Yeah, but I think he was the one who did it last time, wasn't he? He was. But <coughs> again, because I remember him writing that and we said that I approved it. Or change the orders and so on. So, the finance can say nobody did that, huh? Uh, I don't remember who did it. I just remember doing it. Oh. I think oh. let me know. Let me know Saturday. Got it. Our motion to accept. Treasures? Finance. Finance. Sorry. 10 years is hard. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Uh, legislation and policy. <coughs> Police and fire. Nothing. Street, sidewalks, and drainage. Nothing. And blooper. Uh, Fortune Boards, Planning Commission. Uh, we did meet last month and had the uh, presentation from the Historical Review Board. And that would be an ongoing thing, but they did present a draft to us. It was like 25 pages. Really well done, actually. They have a lot of examples from other places. Mm -hmm. Forms. They're going to have a board of, uh, I don't know how you would call it, like an approval board. Almost, if you have something you want to do, you come and sit before the board and they'll work with you. It's, it's, it's going to cause some tension, I think, because, you know, it's time telling people through our house as what you should do. But they're, the board itself is sort of you know, Becky runs it, you know, Becky, and she's sort of against what they want to do. She's like, "Hey, it's your house, do what you want." So there's, there's a good mix of opinions on there. So I think it will work once we get through it. Okay. Uh, 
from the field. Yeah. initial ironing out what to do with it. Yeah. It, was, it was well done. It took about six months to do it. Mm -hmm. It was nice. What was this? Planning. This time, not planning. Motion and separate planning report. Sorry. Go All favor. All right. Bye. Opposed? Bye. Forward of zoning appeals. How much damage is on the floor? I'm not sure you're allowed to double it. How much damage is on the floor? Two. Uh, forest board. What's that say? Well, I was down in the woods. So I took a look at the children's house. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. You, you took a look at the children's house. And uh, I couldn't find where. Uh, Dr. Bissell was so putting up the, the post to uh, protect the low flowers, you know, the special flowers. And uh, he never got any permission to do that. Now, I don't know if he can do that or not, but to keep the deer up yeah. for the these flowers. I guess they're very, maybe rare. <laughs> and I, but I don't know where they're at. But uh, uh, Eleanor was going to come to the meeting today. Right. Apparently she couldn't make it. Third time, um, third time. But um, I, I think I get, got to get your dad involved because the paths are all being taken to over by the weeds. Yeah. You, you know that. Yeah. You see, you go down here. Now, where did we get the, 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 the mower last time we did this? You know, we, we mowed the side and we cut all the crap up. Was it from these guys? Was it? Maybe. Maybe the township was the township, there, so. I, I think maybe yeah. we got it from the township. I can't remember. Okay, but ask your dad if he wants to get involved. Yeah, yeah. Is he okay yeah. like that? Yeah. Okay, good. Because as long as he do whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah, he was a, he was a good, he was a good yeah. um, catalyst for this. Okay, but otherwise everything's going yeah. okay there. Okay. Motion except the forward board. All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Um, High Memorial? Yes. Okay. We're going to meet tomorrow night. And I'll read this. One thing. There's a lot of things going on right now. But we meet every other month. And there's another outfit that we should stick with the given date. Quit vacillating, you know. If somebody can't come, move the date. No. It's over. Okay. So uh, uh, everything's going pretty smooth there, except uh, the mower. I don't know. The mower. We're spending that with fifteen hundred Yeah. Um, is that the same mower? Yeah. Yes. Eighty four foot from that. You want that? That's the Well, that's the final number Russ said in order to get that one fixed. That eleven hundred dollar PR. Yeah, but but maybe he could explain to us how we got a, a bent piston. Is, is he here? Yeah, let's ask. Him. You know, okay. No. But other, otherwise, I didn't know numbers. So I don't know where yeah. this Okay, and we'll get uh, some memorial benches. One bench ready to start with, uh, with a plaque on it for Bob White and John Rice and Bob Zetti. You know. Russ, yes. how about that lawnmower? Can I, you teach me what's going on there? I put in a PO. Yeah, I saw it. For the cost of the repairs, and they advised it's fixed now. What kind of repair? I think I, they they reported that we had a bent piston. Yeah, they they, oh, right, claim, right. they claimed that they rebuilt the engine. Oh, oh. So are you satisfied with this? Otherwise, you wouldn't have put the PO in. Yeah, and in fact, it was a lot less money than I thought it would be. Okay, you're satisfied with that? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, we'll get it, I'll get it back and we'll give it a good going over. I mean, we haven't, you know, I haven't got the PO back yet, so we haven't, uh, I haven't got it back yet. But as soon I as mean, we get from it back, us, from here? Yeah, from them. Oh, so, but, as soon but, as I get but you it back, got a price, you got a price for it. Yeah. Okay, all right, but you, you, you're, you concur that it's say okay. All right. We'll, we'll see when we get it back. All right. Okay. Okay. That's the only thing I can tell you about the money for. Motion to accept the high fund report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Motion opposed? Um, Western Missouri Fire District. Do you have anything? I missed the meeting. Uh, nothing. Nothing. All right. 
uh, reports of special committees. No communications from residents. Does Records Commission have a meeting date yet? No. Uh, any new business? No. Before we do our control, uh, yeah. dear, uh, you slow down a little bit. Slow down a little bit. I'm sorry. You see all those people with the shirts and stuff in the paper today? Yeah. About the geese? Oh, yeah. You haven't been following it? They did like a they killed 200 geese in the park. Yeah. As long as it's the next 60 times. It seems like a big meeting. I love my geese and all these shirts. Yeah. Could that work? Yeah. If they share the American elements, it's fine. Given the they said once they gassed up, they couldn't. Uh, right. They should have killed them. How can you shoot them? Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey, I got a quick question. No, no, no. I mean, just the actual with them. Okay. Yeah, gas and you know, the signs are so open. They're, they're about that. We have to make a neon sign. Is that allowed? Yes. Uh, every, allowed. every business is allowed to have one neon open sign as long as it's not flashing. Okay, because our ordinance says no lift. The, the true, that's true, except for one open. Okay, <laughs> Dr. Diorio wants to know. So yep. I'll tell him and say okay. So now you slow new business. Can yeah, you slow things down for me? Just slow okay. down. Okay. 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 The answer is already slow. Mm -hmm. Can we do yeah. that? Yeah. Gas ordinance while we're here? We can see the gas ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, so, well let's go then to. Um, Motions, ordinances, and resolutions. Who's going to do it? Who wants to? authorizing all actions necessary to support the continuation of the government's natural gas aggregation program with opt-out provisions pursuant to section 4929.26 and to declare an emergency. Okay. Is your motion to waive the three readings? Okay, so roll call. Okay. Just to waive the readings? Wait, yes. Okay. Okay. Mr. Cassette? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mrs. Cerny? Yes. Mrs. Yetch? Yes. So we are like three seconds. Second. Roll call. Any clear emergency? Mr. Cassette? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mrs. Cerny? Yes. Mrs. Yetch? Yes. All right. Any other motions, ordinances, or resolutions? Any old business? Does anyone have any old business? Is there something like that? Right. Um, okay. Bill. Okay. Bill. Okay. Make a motion. Make a motion that the bills be paid. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. 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 Opposed? All right. Thanks for getting our monies out of you. Finally, do something. Thank God. like to have a new street sign on Walker Court. It's extremely damaged, so please give us a new street sign for Walker Court. Secondly, I'd like to see the village have a trash pickup, a community trash pickup. I think it would be better, best for our roads. Third, Wait a minute, say that one again. I'd like to have a community trash pickup. In other words, negotiate a rate for all, all homes no, the same way. Yeah, it's not my idea. It's just uh, I think it's a good idea. Okay. There are some families going to get less trucks on our streets. Okay. Third thing. Um, as long as it's BFI. We have to bid it. We have to bid it. <laughs> okay. Third thing. I was doing some research, um, and I'm looking. I'm I'm actually looking over the drawings as submitted for the proposed duplexes on Riverside Drive. And I believe that they do not meet one of the criteria um, for building in Residential District 1. 
which would be 1274.02, letter G, lot area per family. And it says the minimum lot area per family shall be 15,000 square feet. Okay? Lot area per family shall be 15,000 square feet. When I look at the drawings as submitted, each one of these two lots, one of them has 17,823 square feet, and the other has 20,905 square feet. Each lot contains two families. So if I read this literally, and I had the solicitor look at it also, it would require 30,000 square feet per lot for a two-family dwelling. So, that's your opinion. Hey, you mind going over that again? Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to tell you the, the actual ordinance. Yeah. 1274.02. Yep. Letter G. Got it. I'm going to read it to you. Good. Lot area per family is the title. And it says the minimum lot area per family shall be. 15,000 square feet with a minimum 80 foot frontage. However, a one single family dwelling may be erected on any numbered lot in a recorded subdivision filed in the county recorder's office prior to passage of this section. The operative area here uh, is minimum lot area per family it, it shall be 15,000. It does. Each one of those lots has an 84 foot front. So they're good on that. But per family. So per it family. Can't be 168. No, uh, there are two lots. Each lot contains two families. And they're asking for 15,000 per family. So that would be. Frontage. What do you think about frontage? 80, 80, 80 foot frontage. Per family? Does not say that. Per building. Per building. No. Per lot. Per lot. Okay. That's per lot. Okay. And they've replied them all? It's already done. It's already been replied from one large lot into two smaller lots. So what are the square footages that they are right now? As drawn, the square footages are currently 17,823. Per building? This is per lot. This is per lot. The lot. Oh, the lot. That's a lot area. Okay. And the second is 20,905. So you need to bring those down to 15,000, basically. No. Um, they need to be 30,000 per lot to fit a two family dwelling on there. Oh, yes. So one family. Oh, yeah, two family. Two family. They, they can. What's the square footage again? I'm sorry. One of them, one is 17 and one is 20. They need to be 30. So, so they need to be one, one uh, family dwellings. Yes. yes. So or, or the other thing I wondered about was changing to District 2. Uh, if they w if they went for a rezone to District 2, then the criteria changes, and then you're talking about multifamily housing with, I think, 600 square feet per family, which they would meet, and you have the setback, which I think they would have. Now, whether or not they would think to do that, or whether or not there's A or B, who would then have that? Zone. I don't think it's anyone's responsibility here to no. to guide them. Yeah. We already had one battle with them about your zone. That's right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they were to make that one lot, they could build one duplex. They replant it back into one, correct? Because it would be big enough now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if they replant it back to one, yeah, yes, it would. Um, so basically, a house. Yeah. How they could not look at that, though, I don't understand. I mean, I'm maybe they can put the variance in and do it for part two. They already planned that. See, we're going to smart up the pitch. So, two times. Now, is that living space? Does that include the garage? That's square footage of the lot. Square yeah. lot. Yeah. The, okay. the criteria changes between a single family and multi family. Yeah. If the single family look at the square footage, the total, and that, that's where you get to 15,000. The multi family, they look at the living space and they, they lay it out per family. They would they would be fine per family with a district two, not a district one, but that would require plot plot change and zoning change and you know, the whole kind of 
stuff. Kind of stuff. So they have to really increase the first one substantially. Oh, you know, you know what they could do? Buy that Riverside Cemetery. They won't sell it to. Well, they wanted to sell it to him, but he said it is ridiculous. outrageous. I remember yeah. when he said that. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of land there. there is Before he started swearing at something. Uh, did you know that the, the cemetery owns that side of? Yeah, it's on. It's drawn on here. Yeah. The, the, the Riverside Cemetery owns a considerable portion of land. Yeah. If, if anyone can see it, a considerable portion. Yeah. I thought it was wrong. If it's correct. They had before the road. They did. That's what I was told. Good work. I'm sure you did that. He did. I know. Uh, uh, any other motions, ordinances, or resolutions? Oh, wait. Are you finished, Dave? Is that it? I don't say that. That's the end. Done for the night. I know. Second and third readings. Done for the night. We did the bills. Questions from the news media. Remarks by council. I'd like to thank uh, Bill Donovan a little bit and uh, Anthony Travis Candy uh, for giving that light back down the street. Uh, Bill and Brandon and Anthony somewhere in a meeting, and uh, I called him and he directed us to Pat Genetti, who sent us to his traffic guy, sent us to Main Street Lighting, whoever it was, and he hooked up with Russ, and like the next day there was back in. So he, I know I probably got about five or six calls, and Russ got a ton of them people stuck back there now they can turn left and it's made it a lot easier so keep it on. I don't know. But if anyone saw the proposal there was three repair it, replace it and do something else and that was the cheapest one that we got and worked out so we're lucky. So thank you to Anthony for that. Uh, Mr. Cassette? Nothing. Mr. Major? Nothing. Chris? Nothing. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 827. Meeting adjourned. Okay, first one is a review by the auditors. No. They have higher density. Uh, we have done that.